Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hello and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit. I'm here with Oriel Oheyon, the CEO of Zengo, an innovative new wallet, crypto wallet solution that I'm so excited to hear more about. Thank you so much, Oriel, for joining us. Thanks, Monica. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Yes, I would love to learn more about what you've been doing at Zengo. It sounds like you've been making uh, progress at a pretty significant clip. So can you tell me more about Zengo and how you got started? Uh, so Zengo is it's a crypto wallet that we launched uh, three months ago. We've been working on the project for two years, and uh, and was there was a lot of uh, significant research behind it. It's a very very simple product. Uh, it's a mobile app that you download on your phone, and it helps you uh, store, send, receive, and buy cryptocurrencies. Um, and it does that in an unprecedented, uh, simple, and uh, secure way. And we've tried to uh, um, significantly augment the uh, the the, uh, the path to adoption uh, of of crypto, but also also listening to the complaints of uh, existing crypto users, which were subjected to hacks and errors and uh, you know crypto loss and things like that. We wanted to also bring uh, something that was uh, a better solution than uh, the hundreds of variants of crypto wallets that there is on the market. So this is what we do. So how did you uh, make something that was very distinguished and different and uh, even harder to hack? What are some of the main components of what makes your wallet so innovative and simple? So crypto wallets are, let's first look at the market as it is uh, today. Um, typical crypto wallet, whether this is a software wallet or a hardware wallet, you can also buy that as from a hardware, basically relies upon uh, the, the user to manage his own security and his private key. So I'm assuming your audience knows what is a private key. Otherwise, we need to get into cryptography. Right. But basically, this is the key to uh, ownership and to spend your Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever uh, assets you have. And this is what you are required to keep uh, safe as long as you own this, uh, these assets. So typically, when you create a new crypto wallet, they will ask you to um, store that private key. And it can be done in very various ways, but typical experience will be a, to write down a set of 24 words, to rewrite them and verify them, and then store them somewhere safe. And uh, no one will tell you what this somewhere safe means. You have to figure it out by yourself and you have to trust yourself that uh, it's going to be the right way. And uh, boom, boom, at some point uh, you realize that you are not the security expert that you are. You wrote it the wrong way. You put it in a software that was not secured. You don't remember where it was. Uh, and you have a new whatever iPhone 11, you store, you restore your phone and boom, the money is not there and the money is gone forever. And this is a very common scenario. Um, the other uh, scenario is people trust more exchanges. They put their funds in exchanges just because it's more convenient and exchanges are centralized honeypots. And the yes. day they get hacked, uh, which has happened very often recently, um, the money is gone forever. Some of them claim insurance, but most of the time the insurance is fractional and so your money is gone forever too. So this is the world as we know it today, meaning you have to pick your poison, right? You either die by your own doing or by the doing of someone else. And we didn't want anyone to die. We wanted to have some, something that enables people to thrive in what could be the next revolution of the economy. And so we looked at all the existing solutions and we could not figure out something that would be at the same time an augmentation in user experience and security, we had to, to, to take a, a blank page and look at the new fundamentals in the, at the cryptographic layer. The, the, the typical crypto wallets rely on public-private key cryptography, and as long as a private key is required 
and uh, uh, the securities involved around the, the, the private key, we could not find a solution that would work for, uh, for what we were imagining. So we took a blank page and started from scratch. And we use a science that has been around for 30 years called multi-party computation, where um, the basic principle is that a secret is distributed between parties without exposing their own secrets, and they can't perform together some sort of computation. So in our case, the computation is simple. It's private key management. It's the, the, the notion of owning and managing together secrets to sign a transaction. So we wanted to build a wallet where, at the same time, the user would be in complete control, but it would, it would never be alone to uh, handle his own security. So we wanted to build a, a wallet based on that principle, which sounded promising. The bad news was that at the time when we started, there was no one who did ever, ever did something like that. Uh, there was not, uh, no GitHub libraries, there was open source code, there was no existing wallets performing that way. We had to build everything from scratch. So there was a lot of research before we arrived to the extreme simple result that we are in today. And um, so today Zango is the wallet that is using multi-party computation and what's called uh, as a derivation of MPC, multi-party computation threshold signatures. Uh, for the user, what it means is means that you will have an extremely simple wallet where no password is required. So it onboards to a new crypto wallet in matters of seconds versus minutes. But more importantly, he has a wallet that can recover nearly every situation, including in the case that we get out of business as a company. Um, and he has the guarantee that only him as a user can access his wallet because we're using also biometrics, deep biometrics, versus any other wallet where usually if you have, someone has your password, it's game over. So there is a lot of innovation, not just at the cryptographic layer, but also at the fundamental security user experience. And we consider that user experience is security and security is user experience. They go together, they're not a separate chapter. And we've built that uh, application, which has been launched three months ago. We've progressively added more and more features to that wallet, uh, more assets. So today we're supporting Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Chain. We were the first wallet in the world to support Libra test network. And uh, it has attracted a lot of attention around us. And we are enabling people to buy uh, any uh, of those assets in matter of seconds from within the wallet with a credit card. So that's basically the fundamental function of the wallet today. That's fantastic. So you talked about how user experience is security and security is user experience. Can you talk a little bit more about that as it relates to this, this new threshold signature? What is that? How does that work? So typically when a wallet is generated, you will have a couple of public and private key generated together. They are tied together. And so to sign transactions, you need to have this private key so you can sign the transaction broadcasted to the blockchain, whatever blockchain it is. That's the, the world as we know it today. In threshold signature, when a wallet is generated, no private key is ever generated. So there is no private key to hack or there is no private key to lose. This is very important to understand because sometimes people make the confusion we share me secret where a private key generated and then split. So here there is no private key ever generated. Instead, we are generating independent mathematical operations on independent uh, devices. In our case, it's going to be your mobile phone and the server of Zango. Independent mathematical operations are generated. They are never going to be run in the same place. They are never going to be exposed to each other. Uh, we're using a lot of zero knowledge proofs and I will pass on the technical details. But what's going to happen is by iteration, encrypted iteration, they're going to perform the same role as one of the private key. And they're going to be able to together sign transactions to the blockchain. And those are the multi-parties. So, so essentially we have one party right. that's, that's held in the mobile device and one party that's held somewhere else. Is it difficult when there's only two parties in a multi-party computation or is it, uh, is it preferable <laughs> to have say six parties in a multi-party computation? I mean, I think about a blockchain needing to have multiple nodes to be more secure. Wouldn't that also hold true? You would need more than just two? So today, uh, it's uh, extremely hard to perform uh, multi-party computation, even at two parties. So there's already a challenge to achieve that level. We are going to release more parties in the, in the future. We actually have already the code for it. The challenge is performance and security, as always. So you can have many, many parties involved. The problem is if you have many parties involved, you impact 
transaction time and transaction signature. And so there is a question of user experience. Are people ready to wait 10 minutes, 20 minutes for a signature to be signed? Here we've managed to build the first ever crypto wallet with two parties, so two out of two, which is extremely fast. It's super snappy. You don't feel even the, 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 uh, the, the, the amount of calculation that is done behind the scene and iteration between the parties. So that is extremely smooth. If we're, if we're involving more parties, which we will in the future, we involve more time, but we plan to do it only if we can guarantee speed and security. So for now it's two out of two, which I is already see. in itself, uh, uh, um, an achievement so we have that today and so those two parties sign and the transaction is broadcasted to the blockchain it's identical it, 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 it's agnostic to the fact that we've done that yes, yes, so we absolutely. don't require any change Understandable. And, uh, so how did you end up getting into this to begin with how long have you been at this and what was you, what were you doing before like at what point did you get involved with zengo specifically so I don't have a great story to tell. I know like many entrepreneurs, they always have this fantastic, like amazing uh, mythological moments where they discovered crypto and, uh, you know, because of their parents were like this or they were in a poor country and they lost all their money. I just uh, stumbled upon it by very late, actually. I have shame to admit. Um, I was, you know, moving back from the US to back to Israel and I was starting to think about what to do next. I was running out of ideas. And I stumbled upon a podcast that opened my eyes. It a was podcast? A crypto podcast. Yeah, but it was not a crypto podcast. It was a podcast that uh, was unrelated to crypto, but talking about the advancement of, of cryptography and the application at every single level of the society. And, the, you know, the fact that we were building a trustless society and all the applications of, around cryptography. And I realized that it was not around just Bitcoin, which was at the time the buzzword. And, you know, the fact that you can use it for money. And for me, there was like kind of a revelation moment that this was a huge rev uh, revolution that would apply every single level of the society, including the economy. And I wanted to be part of that. And I've been involved during the past 20 years in nearly every single technological revolution. The revolution of the web oh. that arrived on the desktop. Uh, it was in my first company. I saw the revolution of, uh, of social media. I was uh, the, the founder of TechCrunch in France. So I, I saw the birth of blogs and uh, you know, social networks. I saw the birth of mobile and, you know, all the mobile apps, which was my prior company. And so when I saw that, I said, like, I cannot miss that revolution. It's probably the biggest one that I will ever see in my lifetime. So I want to be part of it. And um, I just got more curious about it. At some point, I realized that the solutions that were required to start with crypto were not good enough because, you know, it was just like what we described before. It was very tedious and looked very... A prehistoric to me compared to what was expected and i decided that it was an important problem to spend my time on so i decided to look for a team and uh and we started to build it wonderful so what, when did this happen what, what year was this it was in uh, about two years ago uh, right. so so you know, everything went very fast usually when i decide to do something i don't don't waste time and i zoom in very deep so the, the funny part is I have to admit that two years ago, I was listening to the podcast to learn about crypto, <laughs> which today I'm participating on to tell what I'm doing. Exactly. So it's it's of, full circle it's now. Of, <laughs> it's full circle. So, all right. One achievement unlocked to the next level. But uh, we started two years ago. For one year, we worked without funding. It was self-funded. Uh, we, we worked uh, night and day to make our first ugly workable prototype <laughs> to build an MPC based wallet. Once we got the conviction that we could build something that is uh, of quality, we knew that we had the possibility to build a company. And uh, so we, we went after uh, investors, uh, very quickly we got funded. And a year ago we created the company. And during 10 months, we built the first version of what is today live in the App Store. So that's, that's kind of the fast forward. That is wonderful. And so when you say live on the app store, people can use their credit card to purchase um, crypto. Is this something that, did you run into regulatory issues in different jurisdictions around that? Or did you just wait and kind of hit it late enough that all of those things have been worked out? So it's a very important point. Compliance and regulation is like really uh, one of the hammers uh, that every entrepreneur in this space has upon his head. Uh, the, luckily for us, we are building a non-custodial wallet. So meaning that the funds are on chain and controlled by the user we are unable to spend the, the funds even if we are multi-party and part of the co-signature. This is proven cryptographically. So, uh, so we are kind of um, 
saved by this architecture uh, not to be like a money service uh, business and having all the compliance. For the purchase of uh, crypto, uh, we've partnered with a liquidity provider which handles all the uh, all the compliance under, uh, uh, with respect to KYC and AML. So you cannot buy crypto without uh, a piece of ID that you have to provide, except if you buy low amounts. So if you buy less than 200 euros, uh, you will not be required to provide a piece of ID. And that makes actually the experience super smooth. In 60 seconds with Apple Pay, which is integrated, you can buy your crypto. So there is no easy way to, uh, to, to buy crypto. It's much easier than any other service on the planet. So that facilitates a lot the uh, first steps for someone who wants to start. And so was that something, this 200 euro threshold, is that something that the European governing body is determined or is that something that is, I mean, is that across the globe? Is that the same as approximately, you know, a similar amount of, of money invested uh, in the US would be fine as well for a US user? Or did you find that was really specific to European users? It's specific to European users. The service is not yet available in the US. In the US, it will be different. Uh, and also there is no uh, regulation or law that says it should be 200 euros or law or not. It's uh, a, an, an assessment of liability and risk that has been taken. Also, it's not uh, you know 200 euros uh, every day or every amount. It's capped per month. So you cannot like go by 200, 200, 200, 200 and you know, accumulate like that uh, 10 million of euros. Uh, in, in, without KYC, that would not that would be uh, that would be a risk. So the, this is capped, and uh, at least for now. Um, and so this is just a fine way to get started. And of course, as you buy your crypto, it gets immediately delivered into your Zengo wallet, and you get a real time notification that it arrives. So you don't have to wait and check every five minutes or every five seconds if your funds have arrived when the network, for example, is busy. So it's just a fine and a sweet uh, experience for for customers. So as a U.S. user, I can't actually download this in the in the App Store just yet. This isn't something that is available. It's only available in what countries right now? It's available everywhere. Uh, so you can you can download Zango in any country in the world except in China because oh, okay. China uh, there are rules about bans on crypto apps. Oh, so the KYC uh, but, yeah. issue is really what uh what is specific to European users, right? So otherwise, it's going to be KYC Correct. across the board no matter what. Correct. So the purchase is available in 38 countries. Uh, we just released Japan and Brazil. And the US will be released in the next couple of weeks, something like that. And uh, for now, we're touching already all those countries. So all the countries in Europe, Korea, Brazil, and some other countries in the world. So it's already covering a large uh, amount. But if you want to use just the wallet, uh, anyone in the world can download it today from, from the App Store. Excellent. That's wonderful. So I can just go to the App Store and I will search for Zengo, be able to download the wallet. That sounds wonderful. I have a couple of questions about your background. I know that you were involved in tech for this entire time. Is that because you got involved in tech straight out of college or did you end up as an entrepreneur um, with, a, with a different technical background? What was your background initially? So I'm not a technical uh, person. I've never been, and I think I will never be. I don't have this, uh, not smart enough, probably. Uh, I do have three co-founders that are extremely technical and extremely competent. Uh, one for cryptography, one for security and research, and one for engineering. And they are brilliant, everyone in their own field. Uh, but I'm, I'm more, I've been more in the, uh, in the other side of the, of the coin, no pun intended. Uh, always been on the on the business side, so a very strong background for anything related to product, you know, design, marketing, business development, funding. So did, did you did you study business? Yes, I went to a business school in France, uh, and also you know I can hear a French accent probably, and I've been also finishing my studies in Spain where I worked for a few years. I started my career not not in tech. I worked for very traditional marketing oriented companies that pr produce product that you buy in supermarkets yeah and odan on and uh and on very and on. Teaser, exactly so i've done that but very quickly i realized that uh, i had the, the tech bug and i wanted to be part of that field uh in the early days of the web i created my first company and that was a long learning process i had many years or so on the other side of tech which means investing in startups so i worked in venture capital for a few years i also co-founded one of the leading uh, venture funds in France, which is today one of the top performing, uh, in, not just in France, I think in Europe. And so I've seen the other side also, what it means to work 
with entrepreneurs and not just as an entrepreneur. Excellent. And uh, just um, at some point, I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur again. So, so this is what I do today. Yeah, once you get the bug, it's really hard to get rid of the bug. Absolutely. So is there anything exactly. else that you would like to touch on to make sure that we, that we cover about this wallet before we sign off? I think, you know, uh, I'm going to say something surprising, but uh, I would like the audience not to try our wallet first. Um, okay. I would like them to try any other wallet. So download <laughs> any wallet that you want. Um, feel the pain and uh, you will feel it very quickly. Uh, I, I, I'm, saying, I'm saying with a certain level of confidence. And once you have done that and that you are, you have been, your, your once fingers are Once you know the difference, hurting, right? Once you know the difference, yeah, then come over and... and... You know, I, the image that I usually, I use usually is you know, if you want to learn to play the violin, the best way to learn to play the violin is not to start with scales and everything. Just buy a good couple of uh, gloves, uh, box gloves, right? Put <laughs> box gloves. Try to play the violin. It's going to be very hard because you're not going to manage. Then remove them, and then you find you're going to find You'll that find super it very easy. easy. <laughs> All right. So exactly. the equivalent of the equivalent of the box glove is just try any other wallet, any, any crypto wallet, pick your, pick your, That's and true. then once you're done. Use Zango and you will realize uh, that it's like playing violin for the first time. Oh. And hopefully you will, you will like it. Oh, fantastic. I love that analogy. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful learning about the Zengo wallet and how much easier it's going to make it for users to experience. I really feel like driving adoption and making the whole crypto experience is a huge part of getting any other, everything else in crypto has got to really ride on the backs of user adoption. So I, I thank you for having a, the innovation to make a better interface for people to have a secure way of storing their crypto. My pleasure. And uh, tell us what you think. And so the best way to find out about it, by the way, is uh, zango.com all right so zango.com yeah we're gonna have all of the links to all of your social as well as things about you and the company all Wonderful. in the show notes below so people can click and check it out and easily download you can find the links right below this episode so thank you so much awesome. it's been a pleasure Oriel. thank you again for being on the show and uh i guess this is monica profit signing off on the new trust economy and we'll see you next time bye-bye bye-bye You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.